All right, and we are now recording. Sweet. Okay, welcome to Booch Class. Thanks everyone for joining. And Scott, all the way from Morocco, who already makes kombucha. So if you have any tips, please chime in, Scott, because I'm definitely not an expert, but I've made a couple batches and I love it and it's so fun. So um, just how it's going to go today, I'm just going to talk a little bit about kombucha and the benefits of kombucha. And then I'm going to walk through how to make it. I have all the necessities here on the table. And then at the end, we'll just talk about like some helpful tips. And um, this resource that I made, Michelle can send out to you um, after class. So um, kombucha, as you guys all probably already know and enjoy it, it's fermented tea. So it's slightly sweet and slightly vinegary. And it is filled with probiotics. So that's what makes it so healthy. And we'll get into what probiotics do. Um, so kombucha is pretty simple. It's actually really easy to make. It's made out of tea, traditionally black tea, but you can use any type of tea. Um, sugar, just raw cane sugar, and SCOBY. So the SCOBY, which is really gnarly, I'll show you guys mine. Um, it is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. And the SCOBY is what ferments the tea. So the SCOBY eats the sugar in the tea and ferments it and gives it that vinegar taste. And then um, during the second fermentation process, it um, leads to the carbonation. So, and that's also what makes all the healthy probiotics the same stuff that is in yogurt. Um, Michelle, are you eating yogurt right now? Oh, <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> but, um, Okay, so just a little history. Ooh, that looks good. Looks way good. Um, just a little history about kombucha. I don't know how accurate this is because I just Googled it. So, but apparently kombucha dates all the way back to 220 BC. Um, it originated in China. Um, and it was drank by the emperors of like the China dynasty. And it was known as the tea of immortality. So like the tea of life pretty cool because we drank it today and it has the same kind of health benefits. Um, and then the present day name apparently is from this doctor, this Japanese doctor named Dr. Kombu. And he was the one who brought um, kombucha from China to Japan. And Ocha is Japanese for tea. So that's how we got our present day name, kombucha. Um, and just a little fun fact, in the 1960s, it was known as groovy tea. I thought that was cute. Okay, so benefits of drinking kombucha. Um, <clears throat> oh, my friend Micah should be joining. Let's see. Yeah, Michelle's got it. Okay, um, the benefits of drinking kombucha is that it's really, really healthy for your gut um, from the probiotics, the same kind of stuff that's in yogurt. Um, it helps you have a regular digestive um, patterns. So uh, some people that struggle like with constipation, um, if they drink kombucha every day, it can help keep you regular and just have a really healthy gut. And so your normal um, digestive tract gut has healthy bacteria already in it. And that's actually what helps digest like your food. Um, and so the probiotics are just more healthy bacteria that assist in that. Um, and so other benefits. So um, Kombucha has acetic acid in it, and that is like the vinegar component. That's what ferments. And that is known to kill harmful microbes in the body that um, cause cell death. And um, the antioxidants from the tea can help reduce toxins in the body too, specifically in the liver. Um, that's not scientifically proven. That's just like antioxidants are good for you. We all know that. And there's that in tea and in kombucha. Um, and then one of my favorite things about kombucha is it's just a delicious drink and it's lower sugar than like soda or fruit juice. Um, so it's just a healthier alternative. I love my fruit summer drinks and it's my favorite one to drink. Um, so I have been making kombucha for a couple years, like on and off. I started in college, um, from one of my cool hippie friends who's like a mushroom hunter and she's just amazing she taught me and um then i picked it back up again when i moved to nashville i actually found a scoby on craigslist and 
then Damon, my husband and I moved into a van. And so we stopped making it because that would be really hard to make in a van. Shout out if anyone's ever made kombucha in a van. Um, and now um, we live in California. We just moved into this cabin a couple months ago and I got a scoby from my neighbor. So I'm picking it back up again. Um, so what you need, I'm going to show you everything you need to start making kombucha and then we'll go over the process. And if you guys have any questions, just comment them. Okay, let me grab my phone and turn it around. There we go. Okay, so what you need to start making kombucha is tea. You can really use any type of tea. Like I said, traditionally it's black tea, but I like to use um, fruit teas. So this batch that I'm gonna make today is a guava tea. Um, we got this donated for one of our patients. It's like from Taiwan or something and it looks pretty legit. So I'm doing, gonna do a guava strawberry as my next batch, but this previous batch was a raspberry tea. And then like my next batch I'm gonna make, I think it's gonna be honey lemon white tea. So you can really use whatever tea you want. Um, and then sugar. So this is what the SCOBY eats is the raw cane sugar. Um, it has to be just pure cane sugar. Like don't do any of the fancy like monk fruit sweetener, stevia, because it doesn't react with the SCOBY the same way. You have to use just like plain old good sugar. Great value, shout out Walmart. Yes, I shop there. Um, okay, what else do you need? is a SCOBY. So my SCOBY's underneath here, which I'll show you. And I'm gonna go through of how to like trim and clean your SCOBY too, cause it can get pretty gnarly. So this is a batch that I made uh, eight days ago and we'll go over that in the steps. I'm just going over what you need. Um, but that's a freaking SCOBY y'all. It's pretty gnarly. Um, so this is the symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So this is a live living organism. Like it needs to breathe and it needs to eat just like us, so treat it well. Um, and so you can get a SCOBY from anybody who makes kombucha. Um, in addition to the SCOBY, you need some starter liquid. So the starter liquid is just this stuff. It's just liquid from a previous batch. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, okay, what else do you need to make kombucha? Oh, airtight bottles, we'll go over that step. Um, Shoot, let me get back. Okay. Um, I like to use mason jars, and the reason why is I'll go over, but this is a batch I made a couple weeks ago, and it's I just took it out of the fridge, and you can tell when it's carbonated because it doesn't like the lid doesn't go down. So that's why I like kombucha bottles, but um you can also use like the pop bottles. I think um who had that? Scott's pop bottles has it. I can go grab a grab one and show everyone. Yeah. Yeah, Scott can show like another type of bottle you can use. Okay. So, um, and then other things, a couple other things. There they are, like, everybody. Okay, sweet. Yeah, sh everyone look at Scott's bottles. And then I've also used this kind right here, which is uh, airtight as well, but a little bit bigger. Cool. Cool. Um, okay, Janet asked, does it have to be glass? No, it doesn't. Um, some benefits to using glass is that you can actually see the kombucha, so you can kind of like see what the scoby is doing, but I use stainless steel. Um, the only thing I wouldn't recommend is using plastic. I've made a couple. When I first started making kombucha, I used a plastic bottle, and it just, I feel like it tastes weird and like I don't know. I just don't think plastic's that healthy for you. So just stick with like glass or stainless steel or something that's not going to taste weird. Um, okay. Another tip for the whatever um, container you get to put the kombucha in is it should have a wide lid. And the reason why is because the fermentation process, um, it needs oxygen um, to ferment. So if you have like a container with a really small little opening, it's not gonna, the kombucha is not gonna get enough air to ferment. So I like to use just like a big um, jar like this that gets plenty of oxygen. Um, and then optional, if you are a friendly kombucha maker, is um, a strainer. And I'll go over how to use this. So I'm gonna strain like my batch now into um, before bottling. And the reason why is because, as you can see, there is some nasty, gnarly, like, floater stuff in here. And, like, people just don't like to drink that. Like, it's kind of gross. So 
Um, I like to be a friendly kombucha maker and strain it out. Okay, so that's everything you need. Um, and I guess we'll start the process now. So the first thing you wanna do, and all these steps will, can get sent out to you, so don't worry about like writing them down. Um, the first step is to boil a gallon of water, which I did right before this. And um, there's my guava tea. Boil a gallon of water and then um, add 10 tea bags. So this has been steeping for like 20 minutes. So I am going to take out the tea bags because I think it's steeped long enough. Um, and it's really like based on preference, like if you like a stronger tea, you can like steep it overnight, um, but it's just up to you. So this, I put, I put in 10 tea bags because I like it really strong um, for my tea, but I've heard some people do as little as four. It's just like kind of preference, but I think the stronger the tea, the better, like you get more flavor. Okay, so I'm just gonna, so I, for class, I boiled this so that it would be cool so that I could show you like adding the SCOBY and stuff during the class. Okay, so I think I got all of them. And it's still pretty warm, so it still needs to cool a little bit. Um, okay, I got all the tea bags out. And then you wanna add at least a cup of sugar to, um, the warm tea and it still has to be warm so that it can dissolve. It looks like a lot of sugar. It's like Southern sweet tea status, but um, this is what the SCOBY's gonna eat. So don't be like, oh, that's too much sugar. I can't eat that much sugar because this is what is going to ferment and the SCOBY needs food to live. So we're just gonna dissolve the sugar and I'm gonna try it to make sure it's sweet enough. It should be like, like I said, like Southern sweet tea status. Um, if it's not sweet enough, the SCOBY's not gonna have any food to eat on and it's not gonna be healthy. So, let me dissolve this. I'm gonna try it. Oh yeah, that's sweet enough, okay. And it's still a little bit warm, so you have to let it cool completely to room temperature. And the reason why is because too hot of water can damage and even kill your SCOBY. So I might like add some ice to this to cool it down for the sake of the class. Um, but we'll just like set it aside to now, for now. Okay. So we'll come back to this part. Um, I'm gonna kind of jump ahead so I can let it cool a little bit more. And so once it's cooled to room temperature, you will add a SCOBY and then this liquid starter. And so you can't just add the SCOBY by itself because it needs the liquid starter and all that is is like kombucha from a previous batch. Um, it needs some of that liquid to like start the fermenting process. Um, so we'll add in the SCOBY in a few minutes once it's cold. So um, <clears throat> that is the process of making the first batch. Once you add the SCOBY and the liquid, you just put it in, um, you are gonna cover it. So I just use paper towels because I'm cheap, but you can use like cheesecloth. Um, cover it with a breathable material and then a rubber band. And you wanna keep it covered obviously so like fruit flies and stuff don't get into it, but it has to be able to breathe um, because like I said, the oxygen is what causes the fermenting um, process. And so once it's covered, you're gonna store it. I'll show you my boot cabinet in a dark, cool um, cabinet. And it has to be dark. I don't really know why, but kombucha doesn't like sunlight. I think it like spe speeds up the fermentation process if it's in like a hot in sunlight. So just keep it in a dark, cool place. Um, and I like to keep it for about a week. So, okay, we'll jump ahead now. Um, so this batch here, I started um, last Thursday. So the process I just showed you where I made tea and added SCOBY in the starter, that was um, last Thursday and it's been sitting covered with um, a paper towel and rubber bands since then. And I have been trying it every day since, what was that, Wednesday? Um, so I just get like a little spoon and try it, just do that right now, to make sure that I like the, well the taste first of all, but like the consistency of 
um, sugar and vinegar. Oh yeah, it's perfect, spot on. My sweet spot I found is like eight days. Um, some like hardcore kombucha drinkers like it really vinegary and I just don't think it tastes good. So I like to leave it a little bit sweet and leaving it with a, um, a hint sweet before you bottle it also helps with the second fermentation process because when you bottle it, there's still like remains of SCOBY, even though like the whole SCOBY, it's called the mother, isn't in the bottles, like the remains of it are. And so that is what causes the second fermentation. And if you leave the batch a hint sweet, um, you can also add fruit juice to help with that, add more sugar. Um, that helps the carbonation because the remains SCOBY still has something to eat off of and it eats the remainder of the sugar and causes the carbonation. So I like to leave it a little bit sweet. Okay. So we are going to talk about bottling. So just to recap, this has been, this is the first step. This has been sitting in my cupboard for eight days. Um, just covered. I've checked on it um, after five days every day to check the sugar and vinegar consistency. Um, take off that nasty thing. Um, and so now I'm going to show you how I strain it. Um, and again, this is optional, but I think it's better not to have the floaters. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to take out the SCOBY. And it's really important to keep your SCOBY clean because this is, like I said, a live living organism. And it has to, um, if you like introduce new bacteria, whoa, it looks really gnarly. Okay, if you introduce a new bacteria to it, um, it's not healthy for it. So just like use tongs, wash your hands, that kind of thing. Um, it's a live organism. So um, this is the SCOBY and it's actually like not looking super healthy. Um, we'll go over like what is healthy and not. So look how gnarly this is. It straight up looks like an organism. So I'm actually going to teach you guys how to trim the SCOBY and keep it healthy too. So um, like this, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm making a mess. This part is like really healthy, like that smooth, like kind of trans, um, Transducent, that is like a real signs of a healthy SCOBY. And like this, like stringy, holy, ah, holy stuff is like not good. So I'm gonna cut that and I'll show you how. So we're just gonna set Mr. SCOBY over to the side. And this is, you don't need this big of one. That's why I'm gonna cut it down. Um, and I'll show you like how to store your SCOBY and stuff. Look at that gnarly thing. Okay, I'm gonna get it out of the sunlight. Um, so you can see, so when I started, it's growing. So this is like evidence that it's growing. You see these different layers. <laughs> um, that is like a growing SCOBY is a healthy SCOBY. So that is a good sign. So I'm going to um, cut it in a few minutes before we add it to the next batch. And I'm going to like cut off like ugh, all this gross stuff and like probably just do like this healthy looking part to add to the next batch. Um, so I'm going to set aside some starter for the next batch. Sorry, let me. Okay. So I think I'm just going to do the rest like this so that I don't have to keep holding my phone because I'm going to need both hands. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see. So um, this will be the starter for the next batch. And I like to use about like 16 ounces. So a couple, of, ah, I'm making such a mess. Okay, so yeah, that's good. That's gonna be my starter for the next batch um, along with the SCOBY. So I'm just gonna set this aside for the next batch. And then I'm gonna strain this batch. So I just put like a clean bowl underneath and then a strainer. Can I put some like paper towel down to like help the strain? And here. Okay. So I'm going to try not to make a mess and start straining this liquid. Oh, it's beautiful color. Just beautiful. Okay. Let's see this action. So you can kind of see It's straining into there to get all the floaters out. Okay. 
beautiful. Okay, we'll do more in a second. I'll just start bottling this part. So now this liquid is ready to be bottled. Um, and during the bottling process, you can add um, fruit juice or pretty much anything you want to the bottles, um, anything that's um, lying around or that you already have. So this batch is gonna be, this is a raspberry tea and I'm gonna do fresh lime juice in each one. Um, my next batch, like I said, the guava tea, I think I'm gonna like muddle some strawberries in there. Um, some other flavor ideas, you could do like mint tea with muddled blueberries, you could do ginger tea with um, like a lemon squeeze. So you can just get creative. That's like the fun part of making kombucha. Um, so now I'm gonna show you how to bottle. So we have our strained liquid. Um, oh, that's outside, you don't need to see that. We have the strained liquid and I get the, a ladle and I'll put some in a bottle. So this is the second fermentation process is the bottling. So I'll put about that much. So I leave at least an inch, an inch of air in each bottle. And the reason why is because the kombucha um, needs air to ferment. So if I were to fill this up all the way, it wouldn't have enough um, oxygen to react with for the second fermentation process. And also this is gonna get carbonated. Hopefully that's a good batch when it gets carbonated. Um, and it needs that air to be able to carbonate. So I'm gonna squeeze a little fruit juice, got my fresh limes. And I've been squeezing like half a, or a quarter of a lemon or lime each into each um, bottle. Oh, it's beautiful. I have to get y'all in on this. Ah! Phone down. Okay. Um, look at this beautiful thing. Okay, so I'll do like about that much. It's, this is just to add flavor. Um, also, if you do like a really vinegary um, kombucha, you need to add like a sugary fruit juice or just a little tiny bit of more raw sugar so that it has um, something to ferment with. Okay, so that's probably good. And then I'm gonna seal it super tight beautiful okay I'm addicted to lime nice me too especially margaritas so you see that there's a little bit of air left for the second fermentation process and it's sealed and you can see the lid so that's obviously not carbonated right because I just put it in there so once it's bottled and sealed I'm gonna put it back in my booch cupboard. Dark, cool, dry place. And I am gonna let it sit for anywhere from like three to probably, okay, this last batch took 10 days to carbonate. But um, the really important thing about the bottling is you have to check it often. So I would check it after three days that it sits in there um, to check to see if it's, carbonated or not. And if you forget about it and leave it in your cupboard, it can blow up. I've never had it happen, but I've had friends that have been making kombucha and they've had a batch, literally like the bottles blow up because it gets so carbonated. So um, I would check it after three days and then every day after that. So if you still like touch the lid and it, you can tell it's not carbonated. Um, just leave it in there another day and then check it every day until you feel the pressure on the lid. At the point that you feel the pressure on the lid like this, it needs to go into the fridge. Um, and putting it in the fridge stops the fermentation process and then you can drink it. Well, you can drink it at any point in the process, but that's when it tastes the best. So um, when it's carbonated. So um, what else was I gonna say? Uh, Check it daily so that it doesn't blow up. Um, keep it in a cool cupboard. Um, and another way you can check for the carbonation, so if you use like the bottles like Scott has, you can pop a lid and um, check to see if it fizzes. So if it pops, then 
move it to the fridge so it doesn't blow up in your cupboard. Um, if it just like is a tiny little pot and you want it more carbonated, you can leave it for like one or two more days. But really important, I don't want anybody's kitchen blowing up because of my class. So um, let's check this one. I pulled this from a fridge from a previous batch. Let's set this back on here. Okay, it kind of scares me when it pops, but let's see. Woo, did you hear that? Okay, a little pop. Um, So I'm showing you, I'm trying, I hope this isn't confusing, but I've been showing you all these different um, steps, but these each took like a week. So this, I started this batch two weeks ago. Um, this that I just bottled was a week ago. So it'll make more sense once you have all the steps, but I'm just showing you every step so that you can see it. Um, you can see a few little bubbles. Um, take a sip and see how good it is. Oh yeah, that's a good boot. Okay, um, you guys have probably seen this, but so even after straining, sometimes you can get like a little SCOBY chunk. Oh, there it is. And this is just like the remains of the SCOBY. It's still fermenting. So as you can see, this thing is gnarly. It's literally like the consistency of snot. And if you're really hardcore, you're going to eat it. Um, I'm not going to eat it because it makes me throw up. So um, I, I would just give people a warning if you make it for other people. Hey, there's like a little snot chunk in there. Don't eat it. So yeah, we're not going to eat that. And it's delicious. Okay. Uh, all right. What else do I need to teach you guys? Let me see. The steps. Okay. Oh, um, uh, it's good for you to eat it. <laughs> okay. Actually, I believe that. Okay. One of my coworkers last night told me that people literally barbecue scoby and eat it like a steak i couldn't do that but apparently it's like don't i wouldn't do it i don't know it sounds too sketchy um um oh a tip to consider is that if you are in a warm climate fermentation is going to be way quicker than if you're in a cold climate so this whole process might take half the time in the summer versus the winter. Um, and the reason why is because when it's warmer, things ferment quicker. Um, so, and you just have to like constantly check your batch. So like check your tea that's sitting there for a week before bottling and then check your bottles. Um, the key is just to like check it often to see um, at what part of the process you want to bottle it. And then um, at what point is it the carbonation you want? And it's just going to be like a science experiment. Um, but just keep in mind, if you do live in a warmer climate or summer, it's going to be a lot quicker um, than usual. So, uh, and like I said, my sweet spot for right now, living in Southern California, is eight days um, to, for the tea to ferment. And then the bottling, actually, this batch, it took 10 days in the cupboard. Um, I just saw a question about humidity levels. Um, I'll take a look at that. I'm not sure how he, I, I'm guessing if it's more humid, it would speed up the fermentation. I'm not sure. Um, but this bottle took 10 days in the cupboard to ferment I, or to carbonate. I didn't think it was going to carbonate. I was like super bummed. But then I just kept checking it, kept checking it. And then one day it started to get a little firm. And then two days later, the lid was super firm, moved it to the fridge, and now it's delicious. Um, Jess and Shay, shout out to my coworkers, fellow night shift nurses. Hey, girl. They tried my booch. Was it good, girls? They tried it last night, and it was perfectly carbonated. It's like fruit soda, but healthy. Um, okay, so oh, we have a few more minutes. Um, last couple of things I'm going to show you is um, how to trim the scoby and keep it healthy, and then we'll add it to the first batch we made. Remember. Um, let me add some ice real quick to it so that I don't kill my scoby. That, if you remember anything, just remember not to add scoby to a hot tea mix because it's going to kill everything. It's going to be really sad. And I don't want you to do that. Hold on. I'm just going to add ice really quick. So that I can show you the last little process in our last few minutes. Okay, that should be good. Okay, so remember the starter that we got from the previous batch? 
and our SCOBY. So this starter from a previous batch, which if you're gonna start the process brand new, you are going to get this and this from somebody who makes kombucha. Um, so we're gonna add this and this to the tea and sugar before we store it. Um, and like I said, this is beautiful. This part of the SCOBY, oh, it's like perfect. This, this like stringy, nasty shit. Sorry, excuse me. Um, that's not as healthy. So I'm going to cut and I'm gonna not, I'm only gonna touch it with the fork and tongs to keep it clean because we don't, when you cut the SCOBY, you risk like introducing new bacteria. I mean, it's a living organism. Like when we cut our skin, we're have the risk of introducing bacteria. So, um, let me just set this up while I cut it. So I, you don't need a giant SCOBY, but it needs to be like at least this big to actually ferment and use, eat the sugar. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it really quick. Cut off all the nasties. So, I, if you guys want to start this, I would try to find somebody who makes kombucha already because they're going to have scobies laying around because like I said, the scobies grow on each other. Um, so ways to store extra scobies, um, you can put them in a jar like this with liquid, a dry scoby is a sad scoby, so keep it wet. Um, you can store it in liquid and um, I don't know what you do, Scott. I'm not hundred percent sure on this, but I just seal it and put it in the fridge because that stops the fermenting and it can stay for a pretty long time in the fridge. Other people will keep like jars of scoby and liquid um, covered with like a paper towel or cheesecloth um, just on the counter so that it can keep fermenting. But I, if I'm going to store scoby, I'm going to store it in liquid, seal it and just stick it in the fridge. And the person who gave me this last scoby, she said that's what she did and it keeps it good. So um, okay, so I have cut the SCOBY. This is the good part everyone wants to see. Um, see that nasty stuff? I'm, I'm probably, I mean, some of this is still good, but I'm probably going to just like toss out most of this, like this stringy dark stuff. Like, I don't like it. Um, this is like super healthy, smooth, beautiful. So I'm going to add this to my tea. Um, I'm going to make sure it's cool enough first though, because I don't want to kill my scope. Okay. So remember we made this at the beginning of the class, sugar, and it needs to be room temperature or cooler before adding the SCOBY. Like I said, I brewed this pre-class. Perfect. It's room temp. So. We are going to add the mother, the scoby mother. She's ready to feed on some sugar. She's hungry. Whoa. <laughs> That's going to sit in there. Bloop. And remember what else has to go in there is the starter from the previous batch. So remember, this is the liquid I got from the batch that's been sitting a week. <sighs> Okay, and I'm gonna pour it in there. Beautiful. Okay, and then I'm gonna cover this um, with a paper towel and a rubber band. So keep it covered. Look how beautiful that SCOBY is. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, I'm gonna do this and put a rubber band over it which I can't do and hold my phone at the same time, but you get the picture. Um, and then I will put it in my booch cupboard up here, cool, dry, dark place, and let it sit for about a week. I'm gonna check it after five days to see if it's the vinegary sugar component that I like. And after a week, it's going to be like this. I'm gonna strain it like this, put it in bottles with some fruit juice, and the process just keeps going. And then after a couple days or a week, add the bottles, put it in the fridge, and then enjoy my free booch. It's really cheap to make. Like literally all you have to buy 
his sugar, which is like a dollar, and tea, which is like a couple bucks. So versus paying like four dollars a bottle at the store, you can make your own for like essentially free. Um, you can buy Scobies online. I I would just try to find somebody who makes it though, like post. You guys all have some hippie friends that make it. My coworkers, you guys can get one for me if you want to embark on this. Um, let me just look at my tips real quick and make sure. <laughs> can I for a minute longer and have it at a cocktail? <laughs> Janet, that's hilarious. Um, I think so. I mean, it, it's going to turn to alcohol eventually if it keeps. Oh, Shannon's here too. Hey, Shannon. Um, let me try to get to the questions. Oh, here we go. Okay. The last couple of minutes, I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Okay. Let's see. Um, so the flavor, Micah, to answer your question is from both the flavor or both from the tea and the fruit juice. It's good for you to eat. Okay. Nice, Scott. You're brave if you do that. Um, Okay, add cool water, yeah, to cool down the tea. Okay, mother in your jar. You can put the remains on your garden. Actually, I have heard that, Mom. Um, some people do have put their scoby in their garden. Oh, scoby, sorry to answer your question, Shannon. So a scoby is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So it's the live organism that eats the sugar and ferments the tea. Um, Okay, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Scott, do you have anything to add? Um, just one more tip, the, um, the jars, after they're bottled and carbonated, they can like live in your fridge for a long time. Cause the, like I said, putting it in the fridge, um, it stops the fermentation process. And then if you wanna like keep your SCOBY with the liquid, um, it can just hang out in the fridge and it will keep it, keep it um, from fermenting. Um, I think Dan just asked if it's their minimum size. Um, honestly, the size SCOBY that I did about this big, um, that's about the smallest I would want. Um, and if it gets too big, it can um, speed up the process and ferment really quick. So. I would say like anywhere between this big or like twice that size. Um, and if it gets bigger, I would just cut it. Palm of your hand, Scott said, perfect. Yeah, about that size. If it gets bigger, I would just cut it like I showed you and then um, store it or give it away or throw it in your garden or barbecue it. Whatever you want to do, you can do with it. <laughs> Scobies are pretty cool. I mean, it's a live creature. How do you store it? Um, if you're not making booch. Okay, so sorry, I tried to explain that. Um, so you can store it in a jar, like a big mason jar, and in liquid, not by itself, it has to be in liquid. Um, the liquid from a previous batch, we call that the starter. And you can just seal it and stick it in your fridge, and it'll stay good. Um, my friend, my neighbor who I got this scoby from, she said that that's what she does to keep hers. So if you wanna like keep it, for somebody to give, or you can just put it in the liquid, store it in the fridge and it should stay good. So do you have to feed it? Um, no, because it's kind of like, it's kind of like in pause in the fridge. So if, I don't know, Scott, do you know that answer? If you were to like leave it on the counter, if you needed to keep adding more sugar so that it's still has more food to like feed off of. Um, how long could you store it? My, I don't know if this is true. My neighbor said that she stored hers up to a year in the fridge, like sealed in a mason jar with liquid. So it basically just like puts it on pause. Um, and if you, like if your SCOBY goes bad, like what I talked about, if it's like stringy, if it stinks, um, and you don't have any more SCOBY, just get a new one and start all over. Let's see what Scott said. Dang, a year. That's what she said. Um, okay, any last questions? Feel free to unmute yourself too if you want to ask questions out loud instead of on the chat box too at this point. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. This was super helpful. What's everyone's favorite flavors? Ginger, for sure. Mm, yeah. That's one. I like the lime. Yeah, I like the lime too. Guava, that's my next batch. Awesome. All right, if nobody has any other questions, um, this is going to get posted on YouTube. Um, I actually just finished uploading the one from Tuesday, which was Wim Hof Inspired Breathing, in case anyone wants to um, go check that out. On um, the chat box, you'll notice that you can change the settings of who sees your messages that you send. So if you want to send your email in the chat box, just change it from everyone to like just me and I will um, send out everyone, send out the resource list that Sarah um, is going to provide everyone um, to your email when I send you the video that gets uploaded to you so you can refer back to it as well. Um, also, Sarah, if you um, are comfortable with this, if you want to put your email down so that everyone can see it, um, yeah. or like some form of contacting you, just in case anybody has questions um, to follow cool. up, then everyone will be able to see um, Sarah's email and contact her directly, too. Okay, I'm putting in my email. Um, for those of you who sent me your email, oh, I'm actually like adding you to like the Slackline US like email list so you can get emails about like upcoming workshops coming up. So if you don't want that, just let me know now. And everything I went over in class today, it's all written down like the steps and the tips and everything. So. Thanks It'll for being so crazy. thorough, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I had fun. Good. Um, awesome. So I'm going to keep this open for a while just so that um, you guys can type your emails in. Um, and I'll close it as soon as everyone has left. Cool. Awesome. Okay. It's and stops.